Assalamu alaikum, may peace and be blessings upon all of you guys. This is Abad Rahman and uh, today we are going to talk about IELTS. I know that you got a uh, number of questions in your mind uh, being a new student and uh, you got a lot of uh, curiosity and curies that what exactly is IELTS, okay, who is conducting that, where they are conducting that, how long it takes, so number of questions and there are a number of answers to give to your questions. So, I hope that you will find this video very informative. Welcome to Royal Institute. Let's speak together. That's our slogan. My name is Padre Rahman and uh, I've done English and uh, teaching since last uh, 17 or 16 years. In our life, we have a number of goals to achieve. Right now, possibly, you have a goal to achieve a files. Uh, you may be looking for better bands maybe looking for higher bands but uh, we don't want to leave our comfort zone don't we so we have to leave our comfort zone for a while that's like uh, we're using mobile phone a lot you're just uh, going to have friends parties or you're spending a lot of time in leisure you're not giving too much time to your studies so you have to show a commitment with yourself and you have to leave your comfort zone sometimes we sleep a lot we wake up late and uh, we got different routines for our life there are some simple questions that uh, need to be answered the first question is why I am doing IELTS so many of you doing IELTS uh, maybe for studies maybe you're going for work have I consulted with any consultant to choose the right type of IELTS for yourself so I think that you should consult if you are not sure about uh, the which type of files you need to do and in which country you have selected for yourself and what could be your target bands and if you are not aware of a lot of things so you should consult with a quality consultant how much time do I have? really students have a lot of time if you are deciding your eyes well before time so you may have about, may have about like 45 days or so so 45 days uh, or could be 30 days or like that or could be better days to start what score do I need so the target band should be clear yes. most of us are looking for 6.5 bands for the postgraduate levels and there are a number of students there are thinking to get about 5.5 uh, bands for their undergraduate level what score did I get the last time? That really matters too. That if you have got uh, 4.5 or probably less bands and you have not been able to achieve your bands recently, so you you should be thinking like 5.5 uh, or maybe 6.5. Which skill I need the work most? There could be a lot of problems you may have uh, with one of your skill. Some of them have uh, more problems with more skills like. And if somebody is having a problem with listings, for instance, so the person, that uh, the boy or the girl, need to focus on his listening. He, need, he needs to focus or she needs to focus more upon her listening. Within that skill, so what are main weaknesses? So if I'm just, uh, suppose, not good at speaking and I'm also not fluent and probably um, having some grammatical problems, so need to fix those out as soon as possible so there could be a lot of problems you may have with one specific skill so you may be struggling with the vocabulary that you're not getting right for your writing task 1 or writing task 2 and may, maybe not been able to make sentences correctly okay so your mindset is really important and uh, your attitude will give you the band that you need if somebody wants to get rid of the obesity is having uh, some fats on his body so what do you think that what he should do should should he eat more burgers and should he eat more junk or like uh, french fries and a lot of other things that uh, most of people like no i guess he looks go to the gym probably need to work on uh, his walking like he should jog and he should walk a lot he, then he could possibly lose his weight so your current abilities uh, really matter 
that if you are um, right now around five bands so from here you can get up to possibly a 5.5 maybe 6 could be 6.5 and this is what I, I guess you can get because with your current abilities you can't go far if you're there right here right now and you want to go you want to get to 7 or probably more than 7 somebody is promising you that oh I will help you out you can achieve that so that's not achievable in a very short span of time uh, you have to determine that okay what skills you need to learn right from the start uh, you have to obviously give a lot of time you have to show a lot of commitment with yourself and your goals should be clear and I've said that okay before that uh, somebody could have a goal of like 5.5 some people are having the goal of 6.5 and uh, if somebody is thinking of getting those scholarships or maybe is thinking of more so you should score like 7.5 or like that so what exactly is IELTS IELTS is international English language testing system as you can see it means that your English language will be tested at international level so this is a system that is doing all this a test that opens doors around the world for all of you guys and once you complete your IELTS you will feel that uh, there are a number of universities and colleges that are now ready to accept you and you can start your educational career you can start your other careers anywhere in the English world so IELTS is designed to assess the language abilities of the people that who want to study or work where English is the first language of communication mostly students uh, are coming from the second language background uh, of English they need to provide a certificate they need to provide the IELTS report form with the bands that uh, they that is that is the requirement of the university and college so they have to provide this evidence it is not they're not going to be misfit in that English environment especially when they're going to when they enroll inside the universities and probably in the colleges so IELTS is uh, recognized and accepted by 10,000 bodies worldwide that includes uh, universities and employers and profession bodies and education authorities and other government agencies so mainly there are universities and uh, immigration authorities there are high number of universities and there are less number of immigration authorities that are accepting this so that's the history of IELTS the English language testing service it is uh, English language testing service as uh, IELTS that is known now international english language testing service or system was then known was launched in 1980 by cambridge english language system then known as uh, ucles and the british council so that was launched in 1980 so question is that uh, who conducts IELTS? IELTS is designed by the cambridge university so I'm just uh, yeah okay the University of Cambridge is behind all this and is jointly managed by IDPIs Australia and we have British Council as well so why we do IELTS there are a number of reasons to do IELTS uh, we get one two three four five six reasons mainly these days so academic training is usually used for the education if somebody is thinking uh, to fly abroad for his higher education he must go through by this academic training of IELTS the general training of IELTS uh, is designed for work the PRS permanent residency cases and uh, for other immigration purposes as well that's not accepted in UK if somebody is going uh, or thinking of going to UK so you should think of uh, doing these UK VIs and if you have intention to go for higher education 
from UK. So you need to consult, I just told you before that you have to consult with the consultant to choose a better type or right type of oils for yourself. So if you are going to UK, it doesn't mean that uh, they're not accepting the simple oils. Okay, let me clear you this UKVI. UKVI is a test that uh, which uh, closely monitored all of your movements there inside the exam and that is a in-camera test simply in very confined environment there could be like 15 to 20 students in one room in one hall and they monitor you closely and they're making a lot of sure in terms of the quality the general training uh, is also used for UK and that is for the immigration purposes if you're going for work either you're going for immigration so you should do the general training and if you're thinking of going to UK but the IELTS life skills uh, UKVI life skills uh, you have to clear this level sometimes because this is for the visa for the spouse and for, for the family members and this is the lowest level of assessment uh, of this language it basically takes about uh, 80 minutes and uh, for the B one level that takes about 22 minutes for these academic training general training tests you need to sit in the exam for two hours and 45 minutes okay and uh, for these a1 and b1 life skills test you have to be hang around there for 18 minutes and 22 minutes so b b1 uk uh, visa for it's for for work and uh, for the short term stay or there if somebody's uh, thinking of going for work probably for a short term stay probably for two months or one month or maybe maybe like that so he needs to provide us report form uh, this UKVI IELTS report form and uh, one more thing here that uh, for these academic training and general training your result is there between one to nine bands and uh, for these UKVI tests so they will give you the results in the form of pass or fail somebody have uh, cleared the exam so he will be declared as pass and uh, in other case he will be failed is there any i syllabus no the simple answer is no there is no i syllabus so the question is that where they're taking this material from so they're taking the text and the tasks uh, that are really sourced from different publications from around the world um, mainly uh, there are uh, different types of uh, journals and novels and probably searches and they extract some material from there and they compile and basically it's an open book exam so you'll have the book open with you on the day of your exam and you have to you have to read those questions before and therefore you have to read the text to give the answer of that and for the listening so a range of native speaker accents from North America Australia British and the New Zealand so when it comes on listening test the files you should be ready for these uh, four accents from around the world that are used in the listening test so the IELTS exam is offered four to six times in a month. So there are over 140 countries around the world with over two 1,200 centers. So these days, uh, these centers are just keep on increasing. And these options are also increasing as the clock is ticking over because since the introduction of uh, those computer-based tests, you have now more chances to appear for your IELTS exam. The test starts uh, at 10 to 12. This is the report time. You have to be at your exam center at uh, 10 to 12. So that's uh, your reporting time. Okay. The test takes about two hours and 45 minutes. I just mentioned that before that you need to have uh, you need to hang around there for two hours and 44 and 45 minutes 
these are usually on saturdays uh, mainly they conduct your activities of your listening and your reading and your writing on saturdays and your speaking sometimes on uh, thursdays but you can request them not in the ukvi they're not accepting your request for your speaking to conduct on the same day but uh, they can accept that for the other skills so the other types of files okay nine bands in total so i say i said that before it's uh, between one to nine bands you have to get between that so we have only pass and fail that is uh, in the is ukvi life skills your results are better for two years it means that uh, your IELTS report form will expire in two years time and before that you have to use it so guys there is one confusion that mostly runs in the mind of the students that uh, what material you need to take with you on the day of your exam so I say you don't have to carry any kind of a material with you So you need to carry your CNSC or your passport, especially the passport when you're going for UKVI test and uh, your ID card in which whatever country you are in, you need to carry that with you to have your identification, to show your identification. So the material will be provided on the day of your exam that it will include the pencils and brazers and um, the other stuff that could be a simple thing that you may need about sometimes you need that uh, those skills so on the day of exam you need to take your CNSC and the passport uh, sometimes students carry that the print of the email that received from the AEO or British Council IDPRs Australia so it could be a handy one it could be useful so they'll take your fresh picture you don't have to worry about your previous picture that you uploaded on that day okay so you're not looking good so <laughs> they are going to take a fresh picture of you on that day so online results uh, are available on the 13th day of your exam and uh, you can uh, get those results in the form of your hard copy and the hard copy a day later so you can use this very useful website that is www.rsessentials.com so from this website you can check out a lot of things uh, first of all you can check out the results second thing is that you can check out you can have a lot of uh, material online and the third thing is that uh, you can also book your IELTS dates as well so whatever center you want to book for yourself so you can get you can check your results on the 13th day and with one more day delay you can get that hard copy from the address that you mentioned on the time of filling the application form so you really uh, students give the the address of their homes so what is the IELTS format there are two modules to choose from one is the academic training and uh, the second one is the general training so IELTS academic is for test takers wishing to study undergraduate or the postgraduate levels so there are two levels mainly the undergraduate and the postgraduate levels and uh, for those that are seeking professional registration so you're looking for the professional registration so that's the right type of IELTS to choose the IELTS general training uh, IELTS general training is for the test takers uh, wishing to migrate so it's used for migration to an English speaking country such as Australia, Canada, New Zealand and United Kingdom or any other English speaking country and for those that wishing to train or study at below degree level. So in IELTS there are four skills to be tested. The test format is pretty simple. The IELTS test assesses your abilities in uh, listening, number one, and reading, number two, writing, number three, and you speaking in less than three hours time. We all already know that uh, this time is about two hours and 44 minutes or 2.45 minutes. 
So this is how your IELTS exams go like. Uh, you can see that uh, in similar color, we got listening and speaking. That's uh, the same for the general training and even for the academic training students. So if you are a general training student or either you are a general training student or you are a academic training student, so you are speaking and your listening test will be the same. So let's take the first one. Listening uh, will have like four sections and there will be 40 questions in that and uh, it will be covered in about 30 minutes time. It's not a fixed time. You expect that okay there will be exactly 30 minutes or there will be like exactly 25, 20 minutes like that. But you can expect that uh, it will be like between 25 minutes to 35 minutes approximately. Depends upon the tape script that they play on that day for you. So let's go to that academic training. Uh, academic training has three sections. We say that three reading passages and there will be uh, 40 questions. And these 40, for these 40 questions, you will have about uh, 60 minutes. It means that uh, in these three sections, uh, you will be provided like 20 plus 20 plus 20 minutes to cover. So it means that one for one single section or for one reading passage you will have exactly 20 minutes and same for the other one and same for the number of uh, minutes for the, the third reading passage or the third section of your reading, academic reading. So it is almost the same, it's same, exactly the same, not almost exactly the same for the general training, but the, there is a difference between the, the type of question that you will have or the structure. So we we'll just come to that later. So academic writing uh, has two writing tasks. We got uh, writing task one, okay, and we got uh, writing task. Uh, writing task 2 and out of these writing tasks so we got uh, writing task 1 and we got writing task 2 we got you have to write about 150 words for writing task 1 and we have to write about 250 words minimum at least for your writing task 2 and out of these 60 minutes the share for your writing task will be exactly 20 minutes and this share will be about 40 minutes for your writing task too. So as a whole you will be given 60 minutes even you can spend 21 here and 30, 39 minutes here, here it doesn't matter. So let's go to that uh, general training. Uh, in general training uh, you will have the same but one difference that you will have over there is that in writing task 1 we will have a graph writing here. A graph writing for academic training in writing task 1 and you will have a letter writing. So we you will have to so you will have to write a letter in writing task 1. Writing task 2 will be the same and uh, you will have the same time as well for this. For speaking, you will be provided like uh, 11 to 14 minutes. It depends upon your response, and uh, sometimes this speaking test could prolong. You know, I've heard from my students that they went to their exams, and they, some of them have told me they spent about 20 minutes even. Maybe they have uh, less students on that day to take the interview from. Or okay, so the main feature the main activity of this uh, speaking is that the two minute speech topic uh, we'll just go in the detail for this of this later on the later slides the IELTS band score scale as you know that uh, there are one to nine bands and if somebody uh, got nine it means that he didn't attempt the test nobody wants to be there after paying a lot so Mostly students they want to be between this and this. It means uh, over 5.5 and less than 9. If somebody is scoring 6.5 it means that uh, he is or she is a competent user and in between competent user and the good user. 
and if it's somebody is uh, here that is the uh, between the modest user and the component user so we have a uh, lot of common questions that I often listen from different students so I just thought that I should give the answers of these questions should I use pen or pencil will listening to products improve my score should I skip one or two lines between the paragraphs when, when you're writing you're writing task one and writing task two should I do the test at British Council or IDP IS Australia should I do the computerized test or paper-based test which book should I use to study which dictionary is the best for IELTS can I use all the capital letters in reading tests should I have a British or American accent so answer to all of these questions that it doesn't matter even you're using pencil or using permanent pen uh, provided that you got uh, confidence over your skills like uh, you're not making too many mess and you're writing so but we recommend that you should use the pencil so if you make any mistake you could uh, replace that erase that and replace that that's simple and this will uh, help you to maintain your task clean and tidy you know there'll be less mistakes or there'll be no mistakes at all so will listening to the products will improve your score it could affect it could affect that because if you're listening attentively and if you're focusing on that listening and you're listening purposefully you're trying to pick a lot uh, if you're a second language English speaker so it means that uh, there, there are a lot of things that you can pick from one listening if you pay heed or pay attention on that should skip one or two lines uh, I don't recommend that because they will not wait your piece, piece of paper that you'll give to your examiner if you're using three four five extra answer sheets so this will not help your cause and if you're thinking that uh, like ordinary exams that uh, mostly in subcontinent the students uh, want to use a lot of extra answer sheets to give the impression upon the examiner that uh, he'll give or she'll give them the better marks or higher marks so I say that uh, you should at least write seven or eight uh, words in one line and should not use one or two lines between the paragraphs should I do the test at British Council or IDP IELTS Australia so it depends upon you that uh, what is your choice remember that uh, your English skills really matter if you're choosing these laboratories or these places the way your English is going to be tested and your English is not good so it's, it's not going to make any effect so improve your skills don't uh, focus on this should I do the computerized test or paper-based test if you have less days to provide uh, your results you are in hurry to get your IELTS results sometimes students want to get their IELTS results in about three to five days so the computerized test could be a better choice to have and remember you should have better typing skills which book should I use to study so there is no syllabus since there's no syllabus so we recommend that you should use the past papers that are available in the Cambridge IELTS books uh, right now we have uh, 1 to 16 and 17 books in the market so you can have uh, more books more practice more ideas and uh, I guess you can perform better on the DF exam which dictionary is the best for IELTS so you can choose anyone it doesn't matter can I use all the capital letters in the reading test only in reading test you can do it such as uh, if you are writing your response uh, like if you are writing yes you can use it either that way either that way and this way you can even write your answer if there is a yes no not given question so you can write your yes, yes like this and like this and even could be le like this but not in listening uh, I say that uh, you have to be careful when you're writing your answers especially in your listing we just uh, going to let you more when we'll just talk about those the usage of your answer sheet and how and the rules of the answer sheet I would say okay so should I have a British or American accent so which one you know you know uh, I often ask these uh, the non-native speakers that which one do you speak so they really get confused oh do I speak the British or do I speak the American so I don't think so they, they, they speak their 
good at speaking the British or American accent, so better focus on your pronunciations. Okay, so when it comes on uh, your speaking, you should focus on your pronunciations. Listening uh, takes about 30 minutes. We just told that before that uh, it could be like between 25 to 35 minutes plus there will be some 10 minutes extra like you can add these 10 minutes here between 25 to 30 35 minutes it depends upon the tape script that they play on that day and this time could vary there's no fixed time for your listening test there are as many as 40 questions that you have to give the answer a variety of question types are used there are mcqs we call them the multiple choice we got the sentence completion we got the short answer questions and in listening we got uh, other types of questions we got pictures we got summaries to complete as well and we got the diagrams as well so we Okay, and there are the other types of questions. I just come to those questions later. So there are uh, four sections in your listing. The section one is uh, really important in terms of having a very good start in your first or two sections. If you're not making too many mistakes, it means that you're all set for your big score. Like uh, the first and the second uh, section is based upon the everyday social context. So, social context means that uh, first is there is uh, a lady in book one, test one of IELTS. Uh, this lady that she reports to the police station and uh, she, because she lost her briefcase and she's inquiring about her briefcase. She, so she explained a uh, lot of uh, things related to her briefcase that she lost and uh, the police officer asked her a number of questions. That's uh, in the social context and there could be any other conversation that might have taken may take place in any university or any other place so in section 3 uh, the section 3 is based upon the educational context the training or the academic context so you can expect to have uh, those uh, monologues okay there could be monologues in the, the section 3 and 4 which could be a difficult area to give the answer because in section one and two got uh, the, the conversation so in conversation uh, you feel a lot of ease when there are two or more people talking and if there's there's one person talking obviously he will not repeat that and there are chances that uh, in conversation they will repeat or they may repeat so guys reading will be the second activity on the day of your exam followed by your listing and this will take exactly 60 minutes and there will be no extra time for to transfer your answers from the question paper to the answer sheet. It's an open book exam, remember, and uh, you will have uh, the book open with you on the day of your exam. And you can take your answer from your question, question area and you can transfer it directly on the answer sheet. You don't have to mention that, you don't have, don't have to write that on your question paper on the spot but this will save like uh, four to five minutes at the end for you as could be a useful tip for you uh, there will be two modules we got academic training and a general training module we have all already talked about that before and uh, the number of questions are the same and there are the question types the multiple choice mcqs we got identifying information we got the table question we got the heading question we got the summary completion we got the undefined the writer views and the claims and we also have a lot of uh, other types of questions as uh, just mentioned that before we got yes, yes no not even questions we got the uh, true and false question as well okay there are three reading passages and there could be as many as uh, 2100 to 27 and 2800 words that will be in these three reading passages The writing will be the third activity on the day of your exam for you and this will for this you will have exactly 60 minutes we have already talked about that before in the previous slides so you got academic training and the general training and there are two two tasks and uh, task number one 
is uh, known as the graph writing okay so that is for the academic training and AT means that academic training the writing task one is based upon the graph writing that includes the pie charts bar graphs and line graphs as well as uh, there are that uh, the task that uh, how something works and the natural processes as well so we got writing task two the task two will have uh, will have to write 250 words as I've told you that you have to write 150 words for your writing task one and uh, 250 words for writing task two okay but uh, as a whole you will have 60 minutes remember you have to spare like uh, two to three minutes before the test and after the test before you have to understand that the topic the what topics are and the, at the end you have to spare again two to three minutes to reread what you have written on the piece of paper so in general training the writing task one is based upon letters and these letters will be informal formal and informal letters speaking could be your fourth activity and even this this could be your first activity as well because uh, they can conduct they're conducting their activity on Thursdays so it means that you will have your speaking about two days before you are listening reading writing and therefore uh, you you can even have uh, your speaking after conducting your listening reading and writing on the same day as well it depends upon the candidates that they have on that day or their schedule whatever their schedule is the speaking takes about 11 to 14 minutes and there are uh, three parts in the part one basically the part one is to just settle you down to cool you down because on the day of your exam the number of students they are really confused that who could be the examiner and uh, whether that will be a local person or there could be a native speaker so there are a lot of confusion so they try to cool you down with very simple questions what's your name where are you from what you what have you done what are you doing do you study do you study work and uh, talk about your area talk about your family talk about your interest your hobbies and maybe some questions about your area okay so this takes about uh, four to five minutes to complete and therefore the second part start it starts the second part starts so in this second part they'll give you a topic there will be a two minute speech topic usually you will be given uh, one minute before the topic you can just uh, once you will have that piece of paper in your hand so you'll be given exactly a minute or you can have those 60 seconds to make some uh, quick points on the piece of paper that will be in front of you so this activity takes activity takes about three to five minutes three to four minutes sometimes sometimes five minutes and depends upon your response so one minute to think and two minutes to speak so examiner say okay you got exactly a minute to think about it and you will have to speak on this for one to two minutes in part three part three is based upon the follow-up questions or there is a two-way discussion that takes about four to five minutes and these follow-up questions will be based upon the topic that you were given in part two suppose if they give a topic about the season so you the question might be okay what's your favorite season what is the favorite dry fruit of that season what is the favorite what is your favorite fruit of that season what do you like doing in that season so there could be number of questions like that here's one candidate's cue card you may not get the same one on that day but uh, I'm just giving you one here so these days uh, sometimes they are giving only the topic and there are no points beneath that but if you have a speaking topic like this then have uh, some bullet points down there to help you out to speak on that so you will be a lucky one so we have uh, the food the food that you like and the possible questions could be there okay, do you like eating alone with your family members and do you like to eat at home or like going out do you think that eating junk food can harm your health do you think that uh, the fried foods are causing problems of uh, overweighting yes obviously it's causing the obesity I know that you know that all 
So you can utilize these points uh, as you move on with your speaking. So guys, I always love to see you guys smiling. So let's close this uh, orientation with a laughing note. So let's have a break. I've got a joke for you. There was a professor that was traveling by a boat and on his way that he asked his asked a sailor, do you know biology? And look at this, OG. And ecology, OG. And zoology, geography, physiology. So the sailor said, no to all these questions. Obviously, he was not uh, literate, he was illiterate. The so, professor, what the hell do you know on earth? You will die of illiteracy. After that, uh, the boat started sinking. The sailor asked the professor, do you know semnology, escapology from shericology? The professor said, no. Sailor, well, shericology and crocodology will eat your headology and you will diology because of your mythology. So if you're traveling by boats, you don't need to carry these degrees. You only need to know that swimming. <laughs> Got second one for you. It's the cost of marriage. A little boy asked his father, Daddy, how much does it cost to get married? Father, I don't know, son, but I'm still paying. So poor father, and you can expect that uh, you have to pay a lot after getting married. That payment doesn't stop. So never give up. So you have to, you know, keep your eyes on the clouds, but keep your feet feet firmly on the ground. So a mouse aiming to have the cheese. Don't try that home. But uh, it's about like uh, never give up. You should be really committed to your targets, and uh, you should be, you know, if something something is impossible. But at least give it a one try. I'm sure you'll get that. Okay. Hopefully you like this video. Please uh, subscribe and don't forget to share. Thank you.